Hmm. What's this? Let's find out. Welcome to Bash's Bot Building Extravaganza. Bash's Brush Bot Building Extravaganza. So you should have the following in your kit. Two rubber bands, a brush head, toothbrush head, a three volt brushed DC motor, a three volt CR2032 coin cell battery, two pipe cleaners of different length, and the most important of all, two googly eyes. I'm gonna show you how this all comes together to actually make your first robot. So first things first, um, you need your brush head. Grab your larger rubber band. Um, we're gonna start with the battery. Now there's a trick here that I found that may not be in the instructions, which is first off, you kinda wanna line up your battery. So the center of your battery is about where the color starts to change. Maybe one bristle slot over. Um, and then take your first wrap and get it in between the brush heads, or in between the bristles. That way it doesn't cause weird, like, bristles going everywhere, and then your robot decides to go just wander in any kind of direction. So get your rubber band in position, give it a wrap, then give it a couple more wraps. Then you want to take a bunch of these rubber band wraps, pull them up, and work your battery inside. And it's a little tricky, but a little perseverance will help. The battery will probably want to go shooting out one way or another, so keep your hand on the battery. Make sure you don't make it go flying. So success will look something like that. The next step is to attach your motor. What's important when you're attaching the motor to the brush head is to make sure that the rubber band does not get anywhere close to the rotational mass here. Because that'll stall your motor, that'll cause problems, that could break the motor if you power it up. So use the smaller rubber band that you've got and try to attach it by the same process of just doing wrap on wrap on wrap. Um, and I like to point it away because the wires are going to go back towards the battery. So the head of the motor is pointing away from the battery. So now we have the battery and the motor attached. It's amazing. At this point, you can even try it out to make sure that it's, you know, doing its right thing and you don't have to adjust too much more. Um, so to do that, you take the blue wire and insert it underneath near the negative side of the battery. This is where that little rubber band comes in handy because it'll actually hold it and press it against the battery. So you want it right up against the metal of the battery underneath and on top of the rubber band. So like that. And then as soon as this red wire touches the top of the battery, it's going to vibrate. And now the tricky part, sticking it underneath. So this is our barest bones bot. It's in fact our barest bones bristle bot. It's in fact Bash's barest bones bristle bot. The next step is the decoration. Take your smaller pipe cleaner, and this is where you get to build the eyes or the antlers or the antenna or whatever you want it to be. Um, but the way I do it is by folding it in half first. It's going to go underneath the rubber band on the battery. And the rubber band's going to hold it down. So then I'll bend it out so that there's enough of a little, little tab here to actually fit underneath the rubber band. And then it's time to get fun. So, you know, I want mine to have eyes because I think a little robot staring at you while it's jiggling along is the cutest thing. I have pre-removed the adhesive liner on these, so you'll have to peel the adhesive liner off them. And so to insert this, what I'll do is I'll take the f just one rubber band strap and strap it over, so it should look like that. 
Now, sometimes I've had trouble with these bots. Sometimes they're, you know, not very uh, excited to stay alive and they fall over really easily. So if yours is falling over a bunch, then uh, it might be worth building legs. And I'll show you what legs are. So take the longer pipe cleaner. Um, same process for building the little tab that holds underneath the rubber band straps. Um, so fold it in half. And then this is where you get to be creative about what kind of legs you want to give yours. So I'm just going to insert this and try out some different legs that I might want my robot to have. So maybe I want him to have like one leg that comes out, kind of swoops down, swoopy leg. Maybe the leg has like a little like caterpillary pattern to it. And you can adjust this as, as you play with it and as it runs around. And if it's still tipping over, you can adjust the legs a little more. So same thing on this side. All right. Now let's take this little bristle brought for a roll. So we're going to take that red wire and put it underneath the lowest part of these rubber bands and put the rubber bands back on. So now, this bristle bot's going for a run. And it doesn't want to fall over now with the legs. It does tend to go towards the stem. So if you really want it to face the right way, you might want to turn your eyes around. What I'm going to show you here is some of the secrets of the electronics that are actually going on. This is a very simple circuit. It is simply a battery and a motor. So the source is the battery, obviously, and the sink is the motor. Um, what I've got here is a digital multimeter. Uh, it's set to read DC voltage. Um, and just really quickly to show, the battery itself is, in fact, a 3-volt battery. In this case, this battery is a little old, so it's only at running at 2.75 volts. Now, what's interesting about these batteries is that it's such a simple battery that I can hook the motor up directly, and we should be able to see a voltage drop at the battery cell itself. Now we see that with the motor running, the battery is only reading 2.14 volts. And that's because the motor is actually loading the battery enough to drop it down. Um, and so voltage is related to current uh, through Ohm's law, V equals IR. Um, so to show the current that's actually being sunk by the motor, um, to get a sense of the electrons actually moving through the system, uh, we're going to switch over to current mode. just going to do a quick show to say show you how much power this battery this motor is actually sinking from this battery whoops so we're seeing 38 milliamps um, so anywhere in the 40 milliamp range is going to be accurate but that goes to show that this motor is consuming 38 milliamps at 2.7 volts or 2.1 volts when the battery is actually under load. And with that, we can actually calculate out the resistance of the motor itself on, as a load on the cell. And there's your bristle brush.